Okay. So. What are you doing? I'm back from a disgusting nightmare in the redneckiest part of the world, which is South Idaho, as it turns out. <laughs> Always wanted to see that part of the country. It sucks. I'll never return there again. It was beautiful. What little I got to see of it. Um, the Primer. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Imitation Game. I've seen it a few times. Um, it's about uh, Alan Turing and, of course, how he broke the Enigma machine. And, of course, even after he built it, um, they still could not crack the Enigma machine. After building his uh, device that he got the, uh, the, the British uh, government to pay for to build, and, of course, the secret was is you have to have a primer. And the primer that existed in every letter that the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Nazis were communicating with would end in, like, Heil Hitler and something else about the weather. They give a daily weather report every day. But they needed a primer to crack all the other codes. And so use that primer. They knew that the words Heil Hitler and the word weather would occur in uh, the, uh, the coded transmission. So they used that as a primer to break all the codes for a World War II out of Nazi Germany. But the primer actually applies to everything else, including like, and I'm a big time translator, translate ancient Greek, translate Romanized uh, Sanskrit, also translate Pali. I've always, uh, my professors in, uh, in high school and college said I was a prodigy on languages and nonlinear thinking. I did this test on nonlinear thinking that I scored completely off the charts on. And one thing that's actually required for everything, including metaphysics, uh, field theory, and also uh, ancient dead language translation, is you need a primer. You actually have to know what people are talking about. I have a lot of uh, ancient Greek translations, like all the six translations of Plotinus are all crap. Even the best one, which is by Thomas Taylor, is crap. Because while the Thomas Taylor, Taylor, by the way, who was the most prodigious, most excellent, supreme ancient Greek translator the world has ever seen, he didn't have the primer for what uh, Plotinus, for example, was talking about. The only uncompleted translation that Thomas Taylor ever did, and all his books would st stack about eight feet tall. They literally do. If you just put them side by side on their side, eight feet, incredible amounts of translate. But he never finished uh, Plotinus uh, because he didn't know what Plotinus was saying. You actually have to have a primer to understand, which is not complicated, but it is not simplex what ancient uh, monism truly is. Uh, Neopythagorean or Neoplatonic doesn't make any difference. What it is, non-dualistic or Advaita Vedanta, in the case of Sanskrit, monism. You don't know what they're saying. You actually have to have a primer of what this foundation, uh, foundational system is based on. This is the same reason why Budge and all these, if you ever read like a, a translation of Egyptian Book of the Dead or any ancient Egyptian translation, even though, of course, the primer for translating ancient Egyptian at all is, of course, the Rosetta Stone. You know what the Rosetta Stone... If you don't know what the Rosetta Stone is, then your education really sucked. Yeah, Rosetta Stone had a passage in ancient Egyptian, then one in, uh, I think it was Babylonian, and then in Greek. It was a Greek, ancient Egyptian, so they knew what the ancient uh, uh, Greek said, and they were able to match that with the ancient Egyptian. So everything we actually have today is based upon the, the, and of course we broadened our horizons on translating ancient Egyptian, but all ancient, uh, all translations of ancient Egyptian are senseless bullshit. When you read them, you could find, it doesn't matter what uh, ancient Egyptian translation, whether it be the Book of the Dead or anything found in any tomb, if you read a translation of what that supposedly says, it's like, this is senseless bullshit. I mean, you can kind of hear, you know, what's going on, it's like, uh, when Ra's boat crosses the Euphrates, sun will rise and the soul shall fly. It's like, it's bullshit. You know, nobody throughout history, and of course there is a, uh, a, a, a mystical and metaphysical language, of course, which is completely uh, different from what we have in normal parlance where we're talking about working and eating and sleeping and mundane stuff and mundane reality. But all the translations are senseless because nobody knows the metaphysical system of the ancient Egyptians to know what the hell they're talking about. All these translations that you read are absolute crap. I deal with the same thing and I translate ancient Pali. All the translations and I have most all of them, they're crap. I look at them, I'm like, you fool. Like one of the best translators, by best I mean worst, just mean most famous of ancient Pali is a guy named Bhikkhu Bodhi. He's this He's a horrible, horrible uh, sectarian Theravada translator. All the translations 
read like instruction manuals for operating your radio. He has no idea into the metaphysics of, uh, of uh, earliest, uh, uh, what we call Buddhism is completely meaning. What it was uh, was, was a, uh, a non-dual Sarvastivada movement or a, a neo, uh, neo-Vedantic movement of true monism. He has no idea what the metaphysics of the system are. The same thing is true of field theory. Every book you find on field theory is just this insane babbling bullshit. And I'm not against mathematics at all, but nature does not work off of mathematics. It works off of pressure. You actually have to have a primer. A primer is a key, or the clavis. This is called the sacred clavis or sacred key or what specifically is a primer. In other words, it's a basis for everything that everything else is built upon, right? All buildings have to have this really powerful foundation, and then they're built upon that. All these people out there are trying to read stuff that are built upon this non-existent foundation. Like, we built a, we built a skyscraper on mud. It's like, really? Well, that's why none of this makes any sense. It's all wobbling to and fro. It has no, you have no foundation of what the hell is going on. People that translate Plotinus, people that translate ancient Egyptian, People that translate ancient Greek, um, especially like uh, works of Demetrius, Proclus, Numenius, Syrianus, um, specifically Plot Plotinus, who is the best. Um, nobody understands the primer of uh, cosmic um, foundation of what's going on. Everything is literally force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability and permittivity. The actual foundation or primer or clavis or the key to understanding field theory, cosmic mechanics, is not difficult at all. Everything is a primer. The conjugate, it actually, this is one of the, the fundamental base foundations of all uh, cosmic mechanics, and that is comprehending this conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia, and acceleration, which is respectively the torus and the hyperboloid, or the donut shape and the hourglass shape. The actual negative image of a donut is an hourglass shape. The negative image of an hourglass shape is a donut. These two in conjugate, you could call this the yin and the yang of cosmic mechanics, if you will, because everybody thinks, ah, oh, the yin and the yang. I mean, it kind of registers in your mind and you're trying to talk about, what do you mean a conjugate? It means that they're inseparable, kind of like Siamese twins, or we call today conjoined twins. There's not one without the other. Of course, can't take that analogy too far because you can separate twins now, but this is an inseparable conjugate reality between force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. Everything is pressure mediation. What does pressure mediation mean? It's like, well, what's the difference between saying water flows downhill? That's pressure mediation. Why is it flowing downhill? Because water flows downhill. It's the conjugate nature of pressure mediation of the torus and the hyperboloid that make up magnetism and the dielectric. We also have to understand the counter space. Now, I'm not in full agreement with everything that Dollar had said, but uh, you know, sometimes even a, a broken clock is twice right a day, right? As they say, a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. The most famous and most uh, erudite statement ever made by Eric Dollard, for example, is that he said, and he's 100% correct on that, you have absolutely no chance in hell of ever understanding um, electrical theory without an understanding of counter space. It's absolutely impossible, and of course he's completely correct on that. Um, the only reason I stumbled upon him to begin with is uh, from my studies and grasping the, the clavis or the key or the fundamental foundation of uh, what cosmic mechanics is and how it works. And it's absolutely irreducible to a simplex form because Mother Nature is literally like a hairy armpit chick with, uh, you know, walking around in bare feet. Nature does not work off mathematics. Mathematics, and modern scientists today are not scientists in the true platonic sense. What they are are mathematicians that are trying to quantize everything. To them, everything is a particle. Modern physics and modern quantum is a, a, a sick theory of atomism, uh, materialism. This was refuted by the ancient Greeks many, many thousands of years ago. We have no chance of understanding the principles of cosmic mechanics or field theory without actually having a primer of what's going on. It's the same reason why the most famous ancient Egyptian translators, while they, their uh, skills are unmatched, they still have no understanding of what the hell is being said or what's going on. That's the reason why you read every translation of ancient Egyptian or the works of Plotinus. It's like senseless bullshit. Well, not entirely senseless bullshit, but about 70, to, depends on what it is and how complex it is. Uh, between ancient Egyptian and translation of Plotinus, about 70 to 90 percent like senseless bullshit. You're reading something, but you don't know what the F you're reading. That's because the translators don't know what the hell is going on or what's being said. Language is fluid. You actually have to have a primer to know what's going on. You could say, well, this word in translation means ball. 
you know, like a ball you throw around. It's like, but if you don't actually have an understanding of what a ball is, it's like, well, this word means ball. It's like, well, you're accurate, but you still don't get it. That's why your translations suck, because you don't know what a ball is and what it's used for and how it interacts in the scheme of things. In other words, you don't have a primer. I'm trying to simplify things. What if an entire language was based upon the understanding of what a ball is? It's like, well, you know what that word is, but if you don't know what it means in interaction with other things, what it fundamentally is, what its esse is, as, in the, ancient, uh, as the Germans would say, what's its esse? What's its essence? You know, what is it in and of itself? If you don't understand that, then all your translations are going to suck ass. That's why all translations of ancient Egyptian and all translations of Neoplatonic texts suck. And this is why also, too, anybody with five ounces of common sense will pick up a book on quantum and start reading about unicorn particles and virtual particles and negative moment. You know, like Mother Nature is a crazy hooker on crack with a bag of magic bumping parts. The universe doesn't work that way. BS. Absolute BS. You have to have a primer. Um, a, a book in addition to the fourth edition that I'm writing, and of course that's also going to be the glossary for the fourth edition, and also the fifth, there have to be six editions ultimately, is a primer. You actually, and it, and ultimately this primer doesn't have to be that big. The primer only has to be about, if I make it really concise, it'll be less than 30 pages. A total primer to understanding cosmic mechanics would only, really, if I reduced it completely down, it would only have to be about 20 pages, even less than that. Um, there's only ten fundamental principles, and even then only five fundamental principles, and those five are irreducible to three. But you actually have to have a primer of what is going on. Once you have that primer, then everything else is very, very easy. It's the same thing with building a high skyscraper. You actually have to have a foundation. Everything else is built upon. You know, once it's rock solid and complete, someone has a primer, then building from that is very, very, it's the same reason, like I said, that all these translations of Plotinus, all of them, there's only six of them, and two of those are derivative, so there's really only four translations of Plotinus. But the best ancient Greek translator in the world didn't even translate more than a fifth of Plotinus' nine idiots. The best Greek translator who ever lived, Thomas Taylor, he couldn't do it. The reason he couldn't do it, even though he was the best Greek translator who ever lived, is because he didn't have a primer into the monism and metaphysics of the Neoplatonic system of Plotinus. He'd be the best translator in the world, but if you don't know what the hell is being said, then all you're doing is translating gibberish. These are the same people that, I don't want to single out any particular religion here, these are the same people that will like, sit there, they'll do this number, they'll memorize an entire religious text. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen video of this. They'll be sitting there over the book like this for years. They'll flip the paper. They memorize the entire book. This is so funny. It's actually horrific. But it's hilarious at the same time. You memorize that entire uh, spiritual, uh, well, not really spiritual, that entire religious text. Yes, they did. They can recite to you every word from it. The entire book is memorized. Damn, how long did that take you? Ten years. What does it mean? I got no fucking clue. <laughs> Jeez. You know, comprehension is ultimate. Memorization, you know, it's nothing. I gotta repeat to you every word that's in this very, very important religious text. Yes, you can. Who gives a shit? If you don't know what it's saying, then you're just an idiot. I, I, I like, oh, I slap myself in the forehead when I see somebody memorizing this. Enormous text, word for word, going to memorize all of it, and they don't understand any of it. This is the same thing as the best ancient Egyptian translators, the best ancient Greek translators, and this is also the exact same thing with PhD scientists. I got a PhD on the wall. I am a, a, uh, a, uh, a professor of theoretical physics and quantum mechanics. These are the same deranged, sick, delusional puppies and idiots that came up with brain farts that are not the outputs of any experiment ever done. They came up with the brain farts, these magical unicorn parts, virtual photons, negative... <laughs> God. They literally think that what's flowing out of a magnet, which nothing is flowing out of a magnet, is virtual particles, virtual... Fo this is not my belief. This is what they themselves say. What's going on in a magnet is virtual photons or... <laughs> deranged scumbags. These are the same sort of deranged fools that uh, Nikola Tesla, you know, railed against. This is the same reason why Nikola Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. 
He called them a lot of other stuff. You have to have a primer. Is the clavis or key for building comprehension into everything else. Thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, if you like these videos, please click the link below and drop a buck or two because uh, I don't sell anything and anything really helps a lot. Especially since if you see my prior video, I basically got robbed out of $800 by some evil lying people, which I, I would like to thank them for robbing me. By thank, I mean scumbags or scumbags. Thank you so much for watching and uh, happy holidays. Goodbye.